Welcome to the BI Network Spotlight featuring Advisor Solutions. My name is Ron Powell and I'm the Editorial Director for the BI Network. My guest today is Doug Cogswell. Doug is the President and CEO for Advisor Solutions. Welcome, Doug. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Glad to be back. Well, Doug, it's great to have you back. I know we've done these many times in the past. You know, for those in our audience who are not familiar with Visor Solutions, could you give us a little history? Visor is a spinoff from Bell Labs. We are a leader in two technology areas, in-memory data management and data visualization. And kind of what we're trying to do is take business data and make it very easy for end users to analyze it, slice and dice it, see what's going on. So we're really an ad hoc analysis or discovery tool that's easy to use. This uh, economy kind of leveraging business intelligence as, as well as data discovery tools getting more important than ever. What would you recommend for those companies that are evaluating BI but, uh, you know, with these economic times have a limited budget? Yeah, so right at a high level, I think there's three key things. The situation or the solution ought to be high value add. It ought to produce benefits quickly. That the implementation ought to be fast and easy to get in, and it ought to be cost effective. So, from a high value add perspective, can you give us some insight into what you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, at that level, we're trying to get at key questions that business people are trying to answer, and to make it really easy and intuitive for the business people to answer the questions, and so that they can do this on their own. This is actually a new paradigm for a lot of business intelligence. I mean, there have been some studies. I think Gartner just did one that showed that 20% of the available market actually uses business intelligence because it's complicated and hard to use and IT-centric. In our world, that's a problem because then the business people have a question. It goes typically back to IT. You do the query, run some kind of a report, and there's a queue. So maybe a week or two later, the business person gets it back. It makes another it a cycle. Or they get frustrated with that, so they pull the data out and try to cut warehouse data in Excel, which is generally not a good idea either. So for us, high value add is take that bottleneck out and give the business people a solution that they can use on their own to answer those questions without continuing to have to go back to IT to get the answer. And if you can do that, that really enables them to make faster and better decisions. So what's a typical question that they would ask? Take a sales situation. It might be, you know, we ran a promotion last month. What of our most profitable products did it really impact and where? So you'd like to slice the data around for that promotion. You want to grab products that had profit over 10%. You'd like to then see what regions they're in, and maybe there's staff areas you want to look at specific people. How did they do with these products after the promotion ran? Or maybe it's the multi-store chain. You want to see you know, which stores had the uptick and with which products and why. So that's the kind of discovery slice and dice you want to do. Or maybe you got some performance report back, and it showed that three of your staff did really well and six of them in your group didn't. So, so then you want to drill in to find what's the difference between the ones that did well and the ones that didn't. And you may not have known to ask that question ahead of time, or you might not have known that the problem was the ones that did bad had proposals getting stuck at stage three and four, and those proposals were with certain types of customers. And that's sort of you know the ad hoc nature that it's really hard to capture in, in a reporting system with preset queries and structure. And that's high value add because the business people, when they see that answer, they can make different decisions or they can you know, bring staff that are getting stuck up because they see how they're comparing with the staff that aren't getting stuck. Now, quick implementation. I mean, what does that mean with regards to customers? Well, for us, you know, that means in days or weeks. The business people want the use of it, especially in this climate. If you can give them something and they can buy it now and it can be up and running in, in a couple of weeks and they can use it in the next quarter sales cycle or efficiency improvement cycle, that's really good. The problem has been with a lot of business intelligence, there are these large platforms and they can take 12 months as the stories of 24, 36 months to get these things in because somebody's got a link it to all these tables and write all these queries and structures and pre-produce these reports. That's a hard thing to do, and it takes a long time. So what we're trying to deliver is a solution that can literally be up and running in a week or two with a full enterprise warehouse and give the end users the benefit right away. You also mentioned cost effectiveness. How do you define cost effectiveness? Ron, there's a couple of ways there. There's obviously the cost of the solution, which is the, the software cost, the services to put it in, and the hardware. And then there's the ongoing cost of ownership. You know, typically our value proposition is we can run on existing hardware. You don't have to buy new hardware. We can be in quickly, so it's not a lot of services. Our price points are much lower than the platform players because you don't have to buy all these pieces. And then the end users can actually, you know, maintain and update. You don't have to have the IT people working with queries and all the other things. So just to 
put these things together, we've had situations, the customer cut, it was an $800,000 Cognos project. They cut it. It was too expensive. But we won a new deal because we were a fraction of that cost to go in, and we could be up and running in a couple of weeks versus they were budgeting, I think, 18 months to get output from that Cognos project. And then uh, we're intuitive, so the end users can actually use the tool on their own to slice and dice data to answer their questions. When you put those three points together, that's the kind of situation in this environment to spend high six figures to get a solution that's going to take a long time and produce this complicated situation, that's hard. If you can put it in in a few weeks, it costs a fraction, and the end users can then be enabled really quickly. That's high value, and that can, can add huge benefit in this environment. Well, you mentioned the fact that you can work with their existing hardware. How about their existing information resources? What factors are important in effectively and efficiently leveraging existing information? There's three things we kind of would bullet out here. One, the principle of taking what's there. Second is enabling information to come from multiple sources. Third, being flexible so that when a new source comes in a month or two or six months, that can easily be loaded in. Just to go through those, take what's there. You know, one of our principles is we'll take core tables from the database. It could be the transaction table, the core customer table, and we'll use them as they are because we're bringing them into memory and we're going to link and join and do it there so it doesn't put pressure on the IT resources to produce special reporting tables or what they're called normalized tables. There's a bunch of terms that get used. But this concept of not putting more burden on the already overburdened IT people and potentially reduced staff IT people, so it makes a big difference. And then multiple sources. So what we're doing is you know, we're an in-memory product, so we can pull, I don't know, 10 tables from the Oracle warehouse, the transaction table, the customer table, whatever. We can also pull a demographic profile uh, set of information from an Excel spreadsheet. We can then maybe some survey was just done and sitting on a SQL Server database. We can bring the tables in from those various sources and all come into memory, then we just knit them together in our product in memory. So we have that multiple source capability. The third is the users have this thing, and then some new survey gets done two months later. Solution, in our view, ought to be able to easily add that survey and link it in with the existing data, some of it coming from the Oracle system, some from the SQL Server, and then make it very easy to then you know, cross-tab and, and cross-reference that with the old. So I think you know, in this environment that's really important because IT, even more than ever, does not have the time to work on tables and do custom preparation. So solutions that can use the information the way it already is are really valuable. You know, when I talk to a number of the readers that come to our site, and they come from all uh, types of enterprises, uh, very large, uh, mid-sized, you know, they're getting directed that you just got to do more with, with less. How does Advisor enable customers to do that? I could talk at length about this. There's a whole bunch of examples, but let me take you through three. One sort of a staff best practices. Second is a marketing program. Third is managing trips and events. Uh, staff best practices. So this could be sales. It could be operations. It's basically it's a portfolio of data, and you're trying to understand, again, some metrics, you know, who's doing well and who's not with the ability to drill down to what we would call the causal factors. We can take a mass of information, and if it's a cell site, it might be proposals and it might be related to the timing of the proposals, you know, what type of customers they are, the profitability of the deals, the level of activity and contacts, and maybe marketing dollars. So there's a whole variety of different factors behind these. And at a high level, we can show it in a way that a manager can look at and say, I'm having a problem in this region. Then you can drill down and say, well, that region is doing something fundamentally different than this region. So you've now got the detail to cross-compare them. You know, what you're trying to do is find best practices and bring the rest of the staff up to the same level. So in this environment, and giving that information to management is what has to happen because they're the ones that are going to understand how the process should be working and be able to understand what you do when you find groups of staff performing at different levels. And if you're relying on an analyst to try to, or, or an IT person to try to call out that, that the manager ahead of time doesn't really know what to ask. They've got to look at this thing and say, I've got a problem here. Let me drill down this way. No, it's not in how they're interacting with the customers, boy, it's over here and what they're proposing to the customers, and this group is doing that much slower than this group. And then you have an, a, something you can address. Ron, there's a set of those kinds of examples out there, and it's really, I, I call it organizational improvement or finding best practices in one group and, and using it to make the other group better. Sure, I, I can totally relate to that. Well, you know, if someone were to ask you, the, what are the key differences between advisor and other BI front ends, what would you say? It's just 
sort of whole theme, uh, which is our vision of taking large amounts of information and making it easy for business people to interact with. So if you look at VI front ends, there's different classes. You have kind of the legacy reporting products, you know, the business objects, the Cognoses, and, and that realm of company. And they do a really good job of taking information and producing structured output that see it every day and it's, it's updated, it's really good. It's very hard to do analysis with that. It's not good at flexible ad hoc discovery, slicing and dicing. It's just it's not what it does. You have another set of front ends that are more chart focused or, you know, they're sort of Excel add-ons and so they let you do some of it. But where you need to get is we take the data uh, out of the database and put it in memory. And there's a few players out there that do that pretty well. We do that, I'd say, really well. That gives you the advantage of speed. Because unlike the legacy players, where you basically pre-structure the information and store it in an index mechanism so people can find it, uh, we don't pre-structure. We just basically throw the data in memory. It can be you know, one table. It can be 50 tables. It can be multi-million row transaction tables. It might be an Excel spreadsheet. Whatever it is, it's in memory. Then on the fly is the person's clicking on things in the output, which is the charts, the visualizations. It's changing the data in the memory. You get this really fast response to your query, which can be across anything in any of those tables. So that's the in-memory sort of key to what we do. The second is the visualization. The ability to show the data, we have 15 chart types. And so for that staff portfolio problem, there's something called the heat map, which is really good at showing a portfolio of people or assets or whatever. We have, you know, can do maps and we have statistical views, so we have simple reporting views as well. So we have these range of charts that are really good at showing information in ways people can consume it and digest it. And those charts are also interactive with the data in the memory pool. So our query is click on what you see in the chart changes the data. So if you go to a map and circle the northeast region, you've then grabbed sales in the northeast region. Maybe you then want to, you've got a set of promotions you've run, grab three promotions. You've now got the intersection of those promotions in the northeast region. Now maybe there's a, a bar chart which shows, you know, profit by product, and you want to grab all the ones over 10% to sweep over the bars. You've now got the profitable products from that specific promotions in the northeast region. You can then drill down and see which staff were involved in all of that. So the visual charts are also the query tool, which is fundamentally different than almost everything else out there where the charts basically reflect the change you made in the data. In our world, the charts also change the data. And the third thing we have is we have predictive analytics you know, baked in. So you can visually explore this as I've been describing. But if you're, this is more for the power user, but you can then run a regression. It's a point and click thing. It's much easier than like a SAS or an SPSS. And it'll tell you if there's 130 factors in your table and you're looking at you know, what caused those products to be more profitable, say these five things were explained 80% of that, and you know, they are X, Y, and Z or whatever. And by the way, the first one was segment of the customer, and these three segments were highly aligned with it, and these four segments weren't. So you've you know, mathematically also looked at comparisons and factors in the data. And that's really powerful. And, you know, another example of use is we're doing a lot in right now is if you're doing marketing campaigns, might be email campaigns. Getting the yield up is really important, and this kind of visual analysis combined with the analytics, marketing managers can do this. And we're finding we're getting situations, a mail campaign, an email campaign would have been maybe one and a half to two percent response rates. We're getting quadruplings. We're getting response rates, yields in the eight to ten percent range, just by understanding which messages connected with which types of customers and then focusing the campaigns going forward, we're getting the yields up. And that's the thing that you know, we're finding business people on the marketing side can, can readily do if the data is displayed well, it's interactive, can maybe run some analytics to try to get more at the causal factors. So you really are putting business intelligence, uh, visualization, and predictive analytics uh, together for a business user all in one application? We are, and we think that's the key to driving the penetration and the use by business people up because we're making it much more simple, much more intuitive, and it's much more of a collaborative process because it, you, know, you don't have a weak delay in the return around from the IT group. It happens sub-second on the screen. You get the answer, next question, people can discuss it together. Well, sure. Hey, Doug, it's uh, been a pleasure talking with you today. The same, and I uh, always enjoy these conversations.